Uh, okay, hello everyone. Uh, hope you had a good week. And uh, today, uh, first of all, can you all hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, good. Uh, welcome to the second session for our second lecture for uh, AI Research School Phase 1. And uh, this session, we would continue introduction to Python. We would go through topics such as, uh, we would go through topics such as uh, conditionals, Boolean expressions, and uh, we would start loops with while loop this session. And uh, this, uh, today's presenter is Aria as well. So uh, without uh, further comment, uh, I just leave it to Aria to just start presenting. Aria, can you share your screen? Sure, just just a moment. I think. Let's see. Oh, I think I should turn on my video. Okay. Um. 
Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I'm able to share my screen. Uh, so we should be good to go. Good. Okay. Hey, hello everyone. I hope you're all doing fine. Uh, today we're going to continue our session um, uh, with with uh, with Python, and we. Uh, if I do a quick review of the last session, what we did, um, we basically went over the basics in Python. So what we covered was um, uh, the. Um, Oh, sorry. Let me just bring up the uh, the code first, so that I can go over that. Okay, here we are. So this is the code that we worked on last time. Uh, we wrote our first program in Python. We went through some examples um, as well. So uh, we introduced types. We introduced how we can print a, a string. Uh, we uh, introduced how variables work. So this is this section. We did a quick little uh, a quick program on. Uh, how to uh, how to add a bunch of variables and how to um, do basic arithmetic uh, operations on them. Uh, and the next bit that we went through, oh, uh, and we introduced also the types of variables that we had. So uh, we introduced four types. Uh, these types are floats, uh, integers, strings, and Boolean values. Um, and I did this little thing that if you're, uh, if you're sort of a bit unsure on how Booleans are and how Booleans work, uh, you should wait until the next session, uh, meaning this session. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, see what those uh, Booleans are useful for uh, and how we can basically go through them. Uh, so uh, again, a little bit about me. I introduced myself last time. Uh, just, just a quick mention, I do uh, tutoring as well. So if you find these workshops of value, you can just send me an email. Uh, if you're interested in learning any other uh, courses in computer science, uh, just let me know. Um, and so today we're going to go through conditionals. Um, this is what we uh, need for uh, for learning how uh, this is this is where the booleans that I talked about basically come in handy. So uh, again, going back to a real world uh, example, um, we can basically think of con conditionals as yes no questions, right? So is it raining? There is you can either give a yes answer to this question or a no answer to this question or is she Alice is her name Alice or is Alice older than 21 years old um, these are all questions that we can um, we can answer with a simple yes and no right it's something that it that it, it either is or isn't um, we cannot do questions like what's her name right because the question of what something is is not a yes or no question. So if we quickly we, we can we can translate this into coding, the basic uh sort of if something is something else or not. Uh, and the way that we can do that is by doing some checks. I briefly touched over this last time. So uh, I did a quick example of is five bigger than six, right? And because the question is five bigger than six is a yes, no question, we can represent the 
answer to that question with just two values. Those two values are true or false, right? Which is, again, something that we touched over last time. So if I'm going back to the code, uh, I'm going to do a, a brief overview of this as well. Um, actually, let's create a new file here. So I'm just going to go through a new notebook for our session two. Um, and I'm just going to title this session two. And let's borrow this from here. I'm going to just add session one here so it's more consistent with uh, the rest of the stuff that we have. I'm going to add a block of text here. Um, and I'm going to remove this block of code. I'm just going to paste, double click here and paste the text that we have. And I'm going to call this session two. And then I'm going to add a block of code. So um, the going through my uh, last example, um, I'm ju just going to type in a simple code. If I just type in print five bigger than two and I run this code, it's going to give me the value true, right? Because the the question is five bigger than two. I'm going to call these expressions now. The expression that if is, is five bigger than two is a yes, no answer. Because it's a yes, no answer, the, the answer that we give to that expression, the thing that will result from that expression is, um, is just a basically a yes, no expression, right? It's true that five is larger than two. If I change this to six, it's going to change, it's going to return false. It's going to give me five is not bigger than six. So this is false. So we can do a bunch of stuff here. For instance, if I have a name and the name is Alice, then I can also type in something like is, does name equal Alice? And notice what I'm doing here also, um, there is a difference between one equality symbol and two equality signs when, when we put uh, in the language, in, in, in Python and in most programming languages, it's the same structure. So when I say name equals Alice, in this case, equal means put the variable or the string, let's call this a string, the string Alice in variable name. Oh, yeah, sure. I'm sorry about that. Um, is this better now? Okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay. But here we have double equality checks. So this means does variable name equal Alice? And yeah, so this is pretty much like the actual equality sign that we use in math expressions, for example, when we say two plus two is equal four, um, in programming that equal uh, is changed to two equals because we are using the equality symbol for assigning a value to a variable. Um, if I print this out, if I run this code, just remember the shortcut key for running a piece of code in Google Colab is control and enter. Uh, alternatively, we can also use mouse and just hit run here, but that's faster. So I'm going to do that. Um, and if I change this to Bob, 
well, we're going to get false, right? Um, yeah, so this was the first first uh, program that we did today. Um, just like last time, uh, just I want to just make sure that you guys have logged into Google Colab and are up and running with coding. And also if you've done this example, so if you can, um, yeah, show me a thumbs up once you're done with that, uh, it would be great. Okay. Also, let me know if you have any questions and if I'm um, yeah, going too fast or too slow. Um, okay. Another thing that we can also do here is we did a five is five bigger than six. Uh, I can also uh, slightly improve, enhance this example a little bit and uh, just type in a variable, give that a 10 and say, if this var uh, variable is bigger than six. And if I run this code, it's going to go look for that variable and it's going to get back to me uh, what we're going to have. We can also type in stuff like print is, and do some calculation here, five times six plus four is bigger than two times three, something like this. By the way, in Python, uh, what you can do this, if you use one uh, asterisk symbol, if you just use one of these, uh, you're going to get two times three. If you use two, this, this is going to change the operation to, to power operation. So this is going to read as two to the power of three. Um, and two to the power of three means just two multiplied by itself three times, right? So it's two times two times two. So if I just run this code as well, uh, it turns out that two to the power of three is smaller than five times six plus four. Uh, and it makes sense, right? Because five times six plus four, if you calculate it's, um, it's 34, uh, but two to the power of three is just eight. Uh, also something else that you might have noticed, uh, you can use just equality checks and um, bigger than, smaller than, uh, stuff like that in when you're doing mathematical expressions as well. And uh, what's going to happen is that the the math stuff is going to be calculated or going to be calculated first, and then the equality checks are going to be calculated. We also have uh, something like this symbol. Um, sorry, this symbol, which is so. This is a strictly bigger than symbol. This is bigger. This is bigger than or equal to symbol. So, uh, in this case, if I use 34 here, which is we know which is the answer of this expression. If I run this code, it's going to give back true to me. Uh, if I remove this here, this means if this expression is strictly bigger than 34. If I run this piece of code, we're going to get false uh, because 34 is not strictly bigger than 34. Um, so just going to keep it as this, and I'm going to keep keep do the power example here as well. So let's do something like two to the power of three bigger than three to the power of two. And yeah, let's just run this code as well. Just going to write this. This means power. Or better yet, a to the power of okay. Uh, if there are any questions until now, just let me know and let me know if you've experimented with this and you're um, you're okay with moving on.
Okay. Going back to the slides, I briefly touched over the, oops, sorry, I should get this away. Um, I briefly touched over the uh, order of operations last time. Here, we're going to look at them in a more, um, more serious way. So if we're just continue, yeah. And I'm sorry, I just noticed that I have my meeting chats in the same screen that I'm sharing my uh, sharing my slides. So I, uh, I'm just going to move that away. Um, okay. So these are the, oh, these are the operations that we have. Uh, so I touched over equality, uh, less than, less than or equal to, bigger than, bigger than or equal to. Uh, and the exclamation point equal is that whether a value is not equal to another value. So I'll do a quick example of this as well. If we print something like five not equal to six, we're going to get the value true, right? Because five is not equal to six. And this is the order of operations that we have. Before that, I'm going to go through another thing as well. So in Usually in real life, we also encounter this. Uh, the yes, no questions, we can couple them with other yes, no questions and say whether this statement true, but also another statement, it, are both of them true at the same time or is only one of them true um, or is either of them true, something like that. So we can do that in the... Uh, context of programming languages as well. Uh, so if we have two expressions, two Boolean expressions, two uh, questions basically that evaluate to either true or false, uh, we can use um, a series of operations to determine if they're both true at the same time or if one of them is true um, uh, and the other one's not, stuff like that. So. The first thing that we are going to see is A and B. So if we have, if you want to see if A and B is true, uh, the way that it turns out is that both A and B should be true so that the, uh, the uh, logical operation A and B is true, right? So this in real life, um, if someone asks you, is it both, raining and uh, is it both raining and snowing at the same time? Something like that. If the answer to that question is yes, um, then uh, it evaluate the A and B, both raining and snowing, which are separate, uh, separate things that happen on their own. Um, if both of them are true, then, then if if they happen to get uh, if if both of them are true, the and of them is true as well. Uh, there uh, and that's that's basically what the and expression does. If we have the or operation, which is the next one, um, this 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 evaluates to true if only one of them or both of them are true. So. Um, it, the only condition that this expression A or B doesn't evaluate to true is when both of them are false. So if you're um, if you're asked um, whether uh, you can, let's say you have to go get groceries and your sister, your sister tells you, you can either go to Safe or Save on Foods. Uh, it doesn't matter. Right, you you have gotten the grocery so long as you go into either of those places. Um, if you go to both of those places as well, you you can get both of the groceries. But uh, if you don't go to any of them, you don't have the groceries, right? Um, and we have the and the next expression that we have is the not expression. Uh, so this is if 
if an expression is true, if you do an, um, if you perform a not over that expression, it's going to turn it to false. And if that expression is false, it's going to turn it to true. Um, so going back to the programming example, I'm going to create a new code here. Um, I'm going to have a series of variables. So let's say, um, five bigger than two, uh, and I'm going to do another variable is six bigger than four, bigger than three, something like this. If I print out ex expression one and expression two, the thing that I should expect to get because both of these values, because both five is bigger than two and six is bigger than three, um, the end of them, if, if I perform an end operation with them, they're also going to be true, right? Because five is bigger than two and six is bigger than three. However, if I change this to this two to seven and I rerun the program again, um, as you see, the expression is evaluating to false, right? Because it doesn't matter that it, this expression two is true. Both conditions should be satisfied for the AND operation to perform, to give out, to output the true um, uh, value. If I change this AND expression to an OR expression, however, um, as you see, the expression is going to again evaluate as true because for an expression evaluating to, to be true, only one of the conditions needs to be true. Uh, if both of them are true, it's uh, it's it's going to be true as well. But uh, the minimum uh, the minimum requirement basically is just just one of if just one of them is also true, the expression is going to be uh, end up as true. Um, so here we have expression one five bigger than seven. This is false. This is true, right? So one of the things that I can do, let's say, to make this expression evaluate to false, actually, is if both of these expressions are false, then uh, then the, the, the result would be false as well. So to show you how not works as well, I'm going to change this uh, expression to, to not expression to. And if we run the code here, as you see, the result is going to turn out false because expression two itself is true. So the not of it, the not of expression two is false. And because expression false uh, one is false as well, the or result of both of them is false as well. So, uh, and you can, you can make a table for this as well. So uh, it, it, it will look like something like this. If we have two false expressions, uh, this is false. False or false is false. Um, if we have something like the rest are true. So it's something like this. And these all these all also evaluate as true here. Right, uh, the same thing. If if you do the same thing for and, only the last one is true. So these all should change to end here. Okay, and. You can make more complicated expressions here as well, right? So if I I can do here another or as well, and it's going to turn um uh, it's going to turn the way that it's supposed to, right? So oh and by the way, uh if you're using the same operations, the order of operations, the way that they work is that it just goes from left to right. So this expression is evaluated first. Uh, this expression is going to evaluate to false. And then another OR operation is applied is one bigger than zero. Because one is bigger than zero, if we run this code, we're going to get the value true. 
Okay, uh, so I'll give you some time to work with this. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, and also once you're uh, all good with it, just send me a thumbs up and we can continue with, uh, with, the, uh, with the rest of the session. Okay. So this is this is a table for order of uh precedence how things will uh how the operations will perform first so first of all everything's that in the parentheses is going to be executed uh then power then the sign bit um then multiplication operations then addition and subtraction and then all the logical operations as you see here now one of the things that i should mention is that you you shouldn't um, worry about memorizing uh, these things. Um, usually in programming, you're not uh, you're not using all the exp uh, all the expressions all, all together. But in the case that you need to use them, uh, you can just look this table up and make sure that the expression that you're using is going to evaluate as the thing that you want. Uh, one of the things that I think I haven't covered here. Uh, are these two operations here, which uh, are these two operations, which uh, we're, we're going to see, um, uh, we're, we're going to see throughout the course. So uh, I'll, I'll try to cover these in, in the following examples, um, but the rest should be, the, yeah, the rest of them are covered. Okay, so now we're uh, ready to learn about conditionals. Uh, so, so you probably have, if you have some experience with programming, you're probably familiar with if statements. Uh, the way that if statements work is that if you want to make a decision in your program under, uh, so that your program will execute uh, a, a bunch of code under a certain circumstance and it will execute a, another code under a different circumstance, you use if statements. And, and uh, yeah, so we can, uh, we can basically go through that. The, uh, the best way I think that I can teach this is again, go, going through some examples. So I'm going to go back to Google Colab here and just going to type in a block of text. And I'm going to add a block of code here as well. So one of the cool things about uh, Boolean values and all the expressions that evaluate as Boolean values that we learn is that we can use them in this uh, in this manner. So if if a certain value, a certain uh, variable, or a certain expression evaluates to true, um, we can do some certain thing. And if it evaluates to false, we can do some other things. So a good example of this is that uh, in real life is that um, like your brother tells you if it's raining outside, wear your coat, right? So uh, so you would wear your coat under the condition that it's raining outside. So we have something like this, for example, uh, if, we, if we go through the um, 
example that I, that I said. And the way that we write an if statement, if that is that we're just going to type in if, and uh, we'll type in the condition that we want. So if is raining and we put in a colon after the expression that we have written um, and then we hit enter. And once we hit enter, as you see, the Google Collab itself on its own has given us some space uh, between the code. So when you do an if statement, whatever is supposed to happen inside that if statement should be indented by a top space. Uh, I shouldn't write the next code that I have that I have in my if statement right at the first character of the line that I have. I should put in a top space here um, so that the interpreter of Python knows that this is following uh, the if statement. If the, if the condition evaluates to true, this code should be run. So I'm just going to print here where your code and so if if I just run this piece of code, uh, it's it's going to just print out the oh I should wear my coat. Uh, now I can continue writing uh, instructions here, so I can write another print uh, instruction. Um, and if I if I keep running this code, it's going to print out these uh, statements for me. Notice that there is that top space that I have is still here. If I want to continue with the rest of my coding and do something else, um, but if you just print something like by, uh, and if I run this code, notice that here I'm not putting the top the top space, right? So this piece of code is going to run regardless of whether this condition is true or not. If I change this value to false and rerun the code, as you see, those two pieces of uh, code are not being executed, right? Uh, because the value is raining is going to evaluate to false. Now, another cool thing that we can do uh, is we can add, let's say, another expression here. Uh, and in the if statement, in the conditional that we are using here, we can also do all the logical operations um, or equality checks or all the other stuff that we did before here. So I can say if is raining or is cold, then do all this stuff. Now, uh, again, a review on how uh, how the or operation works. We have it here as well. Because the first statement is false and the second is, statement is true, the whole statement is going to evaluate to true. So the if statement is going to execute uh, as before. Uh, Okay, so let me know if you have any questions and also let me know if, um, yeah, if there is, if you feel good with continuing this. Okay, amazing. Um... Now, one of the other things that we can do here is we can also indicate to the uh, to the program we want a certain piece of code to run under the same condition, but if that condition wasn't true, we want another piece of code to execute. So here I can do that by um, so when I'm hitting enter, it's giving me that top space. I'm going to hit backspace here to just. Uh, go back to go back to where I was before and I'm going to type in else here 
And as you see, if I, so this, what this else does is that if this piece of code is going to execute, the piece of code that I'm going to type in in the else statement, um, it's not going to execute, right? Um, and vice versa. So if I here, if I just print her shirt and let's make this expression evaluate. So now the expression is evaluating to true. This means that these two lines are going to be executed. Uh, if I change this is called statement to false as well and run the piece of code, the the part of the code is going to be executed that it's um that is in the else part of the code and not in the if part of the code. Okay. Now, one of the other things here that we can do is that we can uh, we can type in if and else statement, but also we can type uh, different conditions in an if and else statement. So let's say we want to say, if it's raining, uh, take your umbrella. If it's cold, wear your coat, and if it's, if it's none of the other two things, just wear a shirt. So instead of saying if it's raining or it's cold, I want to say if it's raining, take your umbrella. If it's not raining but it's cold, uh, wear your coat. And if none of those things are true, just wear a shirt. So this is a conditional else that, that I can type. So I can type in something like else if if your um, it, else if is cold, something like this. Um, now in, in Python, the else and if are basically kind of smooshed together. So uh, you the way yet that you type in else if is you just do elif, so E-L-I-F. And so, so this is this is going to be uh, the pro the program. It's going to run like this. If it's raining, if is raining value is true, this piece of code is going to be executed. If the is cold value is uh, is if is raining is false, it's going to go through the next line of code. It's going to see if this condition is true. If it's true, this line of code is going to be executed. And then finally, if none of them are true, the else, else statement is going to be executed. So if I just run this code, since here both of the values are false, um, it's going to just uh, put in very shared. But if I change one of them to true, as you see, this part of code is going to be executed. Now, if I change this to true as well, um, what's going to happen is that, again, the take your umbrella statement is going to be executed because if it's raining, if it is raining, it's going to run. It's not going to look for the uh, other else statements in the code. Uh, it's just going to run that piece of code and then jump out of the entire uh, if clause. So the only condition that the code is going to print this line of code here is that if the first condition is false and the second condition is true. Uh, and so if we run this piece of code, we're going to see the where your code um, example. And also you can nest these statements. So I can type in another L if here, and I can type in something like, let's see. Like if, if you have something like is sunny, 
we can type in here another statement. And again, all the expressions above need to be false for us to get this line of code, right? Okay, so we can continue with this. Um, if you have questions, just type them in the chat. And also, uh, if you feel satisfied with what you have on your side, you can just send me a thumbs up again and we can move on to the next part. Okay. Okay, I think we can move on. Okay, great. So going back to this slide that we had, uh, you can type in if statements like so, right? So you can have only an if statement, you can have an if and else statement, you can have if with a bunch of else if from one to however many you want. Um, and then you can either put an else in the end or not put an else in the end, right? So you can just do conditional else ifs. And this is pretty much the thing that we did right now. So if the question uh, is, the answer to the question is yes, um, the if statement is going to be executed. Uh, if not, the rest of the code is going to be executed. Uh, this is just for one if statement, so and no else's. So this piece of code conditionally will be executed under the condition that the question ans uh, is answered to yes. This is the flowchart for, for else. So for else, we have if the question uh, evaluates to no, this block of code is going to be executed. If it's yes, this block of code is going to be executed. And if uh, and then uh, the rest of the code is going to be executed. So these are basically the things that we just saw. Uh, I want to do another program that's maybe slightly more um, but complicated before we get into the next part. Uh, so one of the things that we can do if we combine the, the, the things that we also learned from last time, um, I want to write a program that basically quizzes the user that's going to use the program. And it's going to just ask the question, what's five plus six? And if if the input answer to that is 11, then we're going to say, great job. And if not, we're going to say that was wrong. Uh, and so we can, we can write that program right now using this if and else statements. So if you remember, the way that you can get a user input is just by using the function input. And optionally, you can also type in a string as one of the arguments of the function. So you can type in what is five plus six. And we 
we're going to store this value of input in a variable. So I'm just going to type, uh, name the variable uh, ants for short for answer. Um, and I'm going to here type in if ants is equal to 11, then print out great job and else print that is wrong. Okay, and so this is this is the program that we have. If I just run this piece of program, if I type in 13, I'm going to get, oh, that's wrong. If I type in 11 here, oh, uh, this is actually, this, this is a good question for you guys to answer. Um, why did, and if you can't answer this, it would be great. Why I got false here? This is something that we we also was a problem last time as well. It was a different problem, but I can give you a hint as well. It has to do with the types. So when we get an input from the user, it's not going to by default think that the type is integer. Yes. Yes, well done, well done, Cynthia. So uh, just remember to always convert this to an integer before you like do uh, other operations. So if we do, do this here now, if I type in 11, I'm going to get, oh, great job, because the input matches, the type of input matches uh, it is this turned into an integer and now it's it's 11. Uh, I'm going to give you guys an exercise. You can do this after the class actually, but um, using and uh, this is uh, this would be a slightly more complicated program than the program that I've written, but um, it's uh, I think you can get it now. So you can write a program that, uh, you can input your grade based on zero to hundred, um, and can and print out the letter grade that you have. So, for example, uh, if the number if your grade is larger than eighty five, you can print out A. If it's somewhere between seventy to eighty five, you can print out B. If it's um, I think between 60 to 70, you can print out C. If it's less than 50, you can print out F, something like that. So that's a program that you can you can write now. Uh, you have to combine your knowledge of if uh, of this program basically. So getting an input and using this uh, using that as um, uh, in, in your conditional, but also this uh, thing here. So combining a bunch of else and if statements. Okay, um, so are we fairly good with the if statements? Is there anything that I need to cover on more here? Or any questions overall? Um, so I we have covered the things that we want to learn, but if there are, you need more examples, I can go through that. Um, and also, if, if you're good with everything, you can just send me a thumbs up and we can move on. Okay.
Okay, so the next topic that we are going to learn is the topic of loops. Loops are quite interesting, and this is sort of the beginning of learning how we can do more complicated programs. Uh, so the, the thing is that we, with computers, we usually tend to want to automate some tasks. We want the computer to do something a bunch of times, a number of times. We just don't, uh, we don't want it to just run something one time. Uh, so for that, we can just basically say, okay, yeah, like run this piece of code like 200 times, print all the numbers between zero and 100. If we want to write a program like, like that, it would be very hard for us to just do it on our own, like go print one, print two, print three, print four. So we can use um, we can use a loop actually, a piece of programs that runs over and over and over again. And what we tend to do usually is that we change some data so that it will give us the desired output that we want. Uh, so as you see here, there are like a bunch of more examples as well. So if we want to print a piece of string like a hundred times or uh, do a do some cer certain process or do a repeat a certain calculation. And um, so the the name that we use for the loops that we have is a while. Uh, the the keyword that we use is while uh, for uh, the piece of program that we are going to write because. The, the way that we type it, we type it as while this condition is satisfied, do this certain thing. So while this number is smaller than the certain amount, like let's say why, uh, while the value A is smaller than 100, print A, something like that, and then increase the value of A. And so this is uh, this is basically a flowchart for uh, a while loop. Uh, this makes more sense if we program it. So I'm just going to just go through this very quickly and then jump to programs. Um, so we have some initialization stage. Uh, we initialize a certain value to be a certain number. Uh, then we check if that value uh, is satisfying a certain condition. If it's going to do that, the loop is going to go through one set of instructions uh, and run the body of the uh, run the piece of code that we have. We want to repeat a bunch of times, um, and we update. We usually update the condition almost. All, we always update the condition. We always update the condition inside the body of the loop because we want uh, to basically end this loop after a while. And we want to um, we want to go back to the rest of our code. So going back to the program, we're going to just going to add in a piece of text here. Just name it while while statements. And then I'm going to add a piece of code. So the way that we write a while block of code is very similar to the way that we write an if block of code. So here we have if a certain condition um, is satisfied, do, do a bunch of stuff. So for a while statement, it's the same thing as well. Um, I'm just going to set this is our initialization stage. So I'm just going to set a value i to zero. And then I'm going to say while i is smaller than 100 and then colon and enter. Again, uh, we have this indented bit, right? So whatever we write inside this indented bit, um, it's going to, okay, uh, it's going to be, um uh it's going to print uh, out the value sorry it's going to uh, i got distracted a bit uh whatever we write inside this this while loop uh 
it's going to give me, it's going to run that program so long as this condition is met. So for example, here, if I write in print the value of i, and I'll, I'll change this to 10, um, and if I just run this piece of code now, uh, it's going to just print i, but it's just going to print zeros a bunch of times, right? Um, so I have to change the value of i somehow so that this condition is no longer met because we don't want programs to, uh, we don't want our programs to run forever. So I'm just going to say i equals i plus one, and I'm going to run this piece of code. And as you see, I'm 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 getting all the numbers right. So what's going to ha what's happening in this program is that i is initially first to set to zero, um, and then we have this condition of while i is smaller than ten, because i is initially zero zero is smaller than ten, it's going to print i, uh, and then it's going to increment the value of i. So we're going to say i should equal i plus one. Um, so the next time that this while, while statement is going to be checked, i's value is equal to one. We can also do something like this. So we can, we can combine if and while statements. So if you have something like if i, This is, this is what I'm going to teach you actually right now, which you saw also in the conditional, uh, in the order of precedences. Um, this, uh, this percentage value, it's called the modular operation, and it's going to take the remainder of the value of i to two. So basically what this means is that if i is an odd number, uh, the remainder of uh, an odd number to two is one, so it's going to, the remainder is going to be one, but if, if it's an either num number, uh, the remainder value of it is going to be zero. So if I say, if I modulo two equals equals zero print I, it's just going to print for me the even numbers. And as you see, we have this here as well. So, Okay, can, can everyone hear me? I think I disconnected. I got disconnected. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Just you have to uh share the screen again. Uh, yeah. Do you and have also, access? Uh yeah. Let me see. And also, I'm I'm using a university computer here, and um, I'm it just, uh, I might have to restart my computer in five minutes. So just a heads up on that as well. Uh, I'll try to quickly jump back in, but I'm not able to, uh, I'm not able to postpone the update. It's just that it says your computer is going to be restarted in five minutes. Uh, I'll try to close the program somehow in the meantime, but if, if that didn't happen, I'll quickly pop in and out of the meeting um, and you guys can, uh, I can give you an exercise for that time to do so that uh, you're not, uh, you're not doing nothing. Okay, so I'm going to share, uh, oh, I'm sharing my screen again. Uh, okay, so I'm going to explain everything back uh, uh, so that I know I've, I'm properly covering everything. So the first thing that we did here was we did a while loop. Every, uh, so we're printing i and then incrementing the value of i until i is smaller than 10. Uh, and then what I did was that, uh, well, we can, we can use conditionals uh, or loops 
in a nested way as well. So if I can say something like if I modulo two equals equals zero, then then do the printing, then print the value of i. Um, and the modular value is uh, takes the remainder of i to two in this case. So if i is even, it's going to be zero. If i is odd, it's going to be one. And then we're just going to print that value. Uh, by the way, a more efficient way to write this program is just to add two to i here. Um, so something like this would be, oh, I'm not printing I. So something like this would be a more efficient program. However, because I wanted to show you how module works and the nest nested statements, I did it this way. Okay. Okay, so if you feel good with this, um, I'll give you some time to work with this and it, uh, just send me a thumbs up if you can. Uh, Aria, if you have to uh, restart your system, you can do this now. I can uh, take care of it for five minutes. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, so I'll just pop back in, in, in a few minutes. Um, if you guys have any question, uh, you can write it on chat or just uh, open your mic. I can answer that.
Okay, I'm sorry about that. Hope everything went well. Um, uh, just there's a question uh, for the recordings. Yes, we do put the recordings um, on the... Um, we would upload them uh, to you on YouTube and we would send... You can definitely access that to the YouTube channel of the AI Research School. I hope I, I did answer your question. Okay, thanks, Arya. I think you can start. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm sorry about that. Those pesky updates. You don't. You never know when. Uh, when they happen, and it's like you, you have to restart. Uh, and stuff like that. So I'm. I'm very sorry. Um, uh, I tried to but while I was teaching. I tried to somehow close it, but I couldn't. So we can continue with um, with these statements before with while statements before I go further than this. Um. Are there any parts that you might feel a little bit uh, unsure about? Is there anything that I should clarify on? Um, if if there is anything like that, just let me know. Um, and uh, if not, we can just continue with uh, with whatever we have. Okay, I feel like we're. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not seeing anything in the chat, so we can continue. Um, we have learned the stuff that we had to learn mostly for this session. The only thing that we can do now uh, that I want to do now is uh, just giving you a bunch of more examples uh, to this so that we can do um, uh, so that we, we have a better understanding of how all of this works, right? So, I'm going to take this program and create a new one off of this. So continuing along the line that we can use if and while statements in a nested manner, uh, I'm just going to type uh, write in uh, another program here. So I want to say if i module two is uh, is zero, then we can print the value of i, uh, and uh, then we can say something like, okay, so uh, one of the things that we can actually do, uh, I want to pair up an integer with a string, and I think it's it's a nice thing that you you guys also learned this as well. Uh, so I can just type in a uh, a number and then add a string to this. Um, so if I if I do something like this, if I want to say the value of i is even, and if I run this piece of code, what's going to happen is that I'm going to get an error. Uh, right, because I cannot add a string to an uh, integer. Uh, so one way that we can change this is that we can convert i to a string. And so once I do this, so this str function is pretty much does the same thing that the int function does. So the int function will convert the argument that it has to an integer. The str function will convert the argument that it, ha it has to a string. So if I type this in here now, I'm going to get, oh, i is even. There, there are other ways that you can do this as well, which are more advanced, uh, but this works for now. So we're just going to keep to this. Um, the more advanced, I mean, in the way that you can format your strings in a much more manageable way. Um, and I want to say else, just do SDRI and then add is odd to this. And so if we run this piece of code, as you see, uh, we have something like this. Uh, 
uh, we can also do a um, uh, we can also the way that we do nested if uh, we, we put an if statement in a while loop, we can also do nested while loops. So if I use the same program here, uh, but let's say here I want to have, uh, we, we can add another while statement here. So what I want to do, for example, uh, for this example is I want to have two different values. Uh, and I just want to print out uh, the multiplication table of i times j. So this would be all the numbers from 0 to 10 uh, multiplied together. Uh, what, what would be the result of that, right? What, what would be the result of the multiplication? Um, so here I'm just going to do while j is smaller than 10, something like this. And then I'm going to print i times j. And so if we run this piece of code, as you see, oh, oh, this is this is actually a very good thing that happened. So I made a bug in my program. And as you see, we're just going to get all zeros here. So what's the problem here? The problem is that I forgot to increment the values that I have, right? So in the in the previous example, I'm changing my condition, I'm changing the data that is used in my conditional. And because I'm changing that value, this condition is going to evaluate to false at some moment, right? And when it gets evaluated to false, the rest of the code is going to execute. So it's not going to get stuck in the loop. If we get stuck in a loop, uh, something bad's going to happen that our program is never going to terminate. So it's going to just run forever, right? And usually we either run out of memory or some sort of error happens and uh, the operating system that we're running the program on, which manages the resources for the program, just terminates the program on its own, right? So what I'm going to do here uh, is for my, uh, we want to increment the value of i and j. Now, uh, we do, we usually also do that in, in the conditional of, uh, in the loop that the conditional is used. So in this inner loop, uh, as you see in this inner loop, I have a couple of top spaces here. So it's the indentation is the same as the print. Uh, here, I want to increment the value of j. So I want to type in j equals j plus 1, right? And now for i, uh, I want to increment the value of i in the original while loop, right? Uh, I want this while loop to have to execute all the stuff that it needs. And then I want to increment the value of i in its original while loop. So I'm just going to do a shift tab. So shift tab will just... Uh, return one tab space uh, to where it was before. And now I'm going to increment the value of i. And once we do this, Okay, this is not supposed to happen. The program should print out the... Uh, Ari, I think the first time that you ran the code, uh, since it was a long loop, perhaps your uh, 
graphic user interface for the session is uh, affected by that and perhaps the RAM. What you can do is to uh, reset your runtime. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. No, you, can... you can reset the runtime for the uh, runtime session for the Google Colab. Okay. So if we just refresh the page, it's going to work. Uh, oh, yeah, no, it's yeah. Okay. okay, just don't use this. This is supposed to get a, yeah, so that seems right, but there is, there is an issue here. Okay. Um, no, there is no problem with the uh, uh, Python. The code has a problem. Like, as the i is zero, it would print. It would print. Uh, zero multiplied by zero, zero multiplied by one, zero multiplied by two, these are all zero. Mm -hmm. And when you increment i by one, uh, the j is now again, is now three and it wouldn't go to the second while again. You have to- Okay, yeah, we have to reset j as well, yes. Yes, now it'll be okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you for that. Yeah, and I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I forgot to add that. Uh, Okay, yeah, so this is actually also good that it's happened because you get this uh, these unexpected things as well. Uh, so what was the issue was that the first time that the code uh, executes, the value of J is going to be uh, incremented to three. And so this J uh, equals J plus one is going to be executed and the incrementation on i is going to happen. Now, the next time when the value of i is equal one uh, is equal, equal to one, the value of j is going to be three. Um, so this this inner while loop, the the condition here is not going to be satisfied. J is still equal to three here. So because j is equal to three, j is not smaller than three. Uh, so what what we should do every time uh, to basically make this code uh, a little bit better is that we should do the initialization stage right before the while loop here as well. So I'm just going to put in j equals zero before while, while j is smaller than three. And now that we run the code, we're going to get this, uh, this table every time. So um, uh, the the first three row, the first three lines uh, are for when i is equal to zero, j is equal to zero, one, two. Um, and then the second ones is when uh, i is equal to one, j again is equal to uh, zero, one, two. And the third one as well, so we have i equal to two, j is zero, uh, zero one, two. Uh, so the, is this clear? Is this clear why the previous code was uh, problematic and why why this this new code makes uh is works uh, 
Okay, and so again, we can, uh, if you guys would like, you can also type this this code in your systems, and um, yeah, you can just show me a thumbs up once you're uh, once you're satisfied with your code. Um, yeah, and also, uh, we covered pretty much all the things that we had to cover for today. So we learned about, uh, conditionals, Boolean expressions, um, and also loops. Uh, we also have a for loop in Python, just to, uh, briefly touch over that as well, which is pretty similar to, to the way that a while loop works. It's just easier to interact from a programmer's pers perspective. So we're going to cover that um, some sometime in the next session. Okay, and with that said, um, yeah, we're uh, uh, we're done with the content that we had to cover for today. So uh, again, if there are any questions, I'll try to answer them with the uh, with the be uh, best I, I can, and. Yeah, just let me know if if there's anything else as well. Thank you, Arya, for your uh for this lecture. That was really great. And uh I wanted to add something. Uh first of all, as definitely uh as we are just explaining, doing some sort of introduction to Python in just four sessions, it might be a bit uh, rushed. We might go through topics a bit quickly, but we uh, really uh, encourage you to just try to uh, work on these problems by yourself. And uh, you definitely need more help. We are... Uh, we are uh, answering. We can. We definitely answer your questions in Discord. So we would. Uh, uh, we would have TAs that they are here. They are in Discord to answer your questions. And beside that, we would have. Uh, we are going to have one hour per week of a TA session. It would be on Fridays at five p.m. on Calgary time. So uh, this week we would have Andrew as our TA and uh, we would send a Zoom link and we would uh, send the description on Discord as soon as possible. But uh, you can, uh, if you have any question, you can write your uh, questions in Discord. We, uh, Andrew and other TAs, they would answer. Otherwise you can attend to these uh, online um, TA sessions. Uh, the TAs would be there to answer your question. That would be fine. And um, beside that, these slides and the notebook are uh, are in the Google Drive that uh, you probably can find it. Uh, the link, the link is um, you can find the link in the email you emails you get. And also, I think we provided the link in Discord as well. And uh, you can also find these uh, sessions recorded, um, the recorded sessions on YouTube of the AI Research School. So yes, just uh, feel free to ask any question if you have, uh, if you have, we are here to answer. If not, thank you for your attendance. Um, see you on uh, Sunday. Have a good week.